something here real quick. Get to get it out of the way now. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right, that's better. All right, three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Geekscant, the home of RPG goodness and general tomfoolery. My name is Zach, and the host uh, joining me this evening, I've got two creator guests with me. Um, Paul Beecham, how you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Zach. Awesome. And then I've also got uh, the illustrious Mark Reinhagen with us. Hey, how's it going? Great. It's going great. Thanks, uh, thanks to both of you for hopping on. Thank you. Thank you for having us. 100%. Uh, Happy Paul, to be here. Yeah, Paul, you reached out to me. Um, I done a video on YouTube. I do different like how to plays and things. And you yeah. reached out to me after one of them, and you said, "Hey, I don't know if you'd be interested, uh, but uh, Mark's got this new game he's working on. It's called Fang Night. And uh, would you be interested in kind of doing a discussion or promoting that in some way?" And I'm like, "Absolutely." So, uh, Paul, you were kind of the you're the glue that welded us all together here. Um, thank you for that. I'm I'm excited that it worked out. Yeah, yeah. I uh, um, I chatted with Mark a while back. Mark, you and I, uh, I I helped just briefly, just in a tiny, tiny, insignificant way, uh, with your initial Lost Lauren project, which I've got sitting on my shelf right here in camera. Um, Bloodstone, yeah. That's right, Bloodstone, absolutely. Um, and that was a lot of fun, and the product turned out gorgeous. I love those books, um, and they get displayed prominently in <laughs> on my shelf in the background um so you gotta love beautiful books right yes absolutely absolutely and those are just they're cool size cool funky format and good content and i remembered you talking about thing night back then um and your vision for it and you talked some about then about um the tail spinner uh tail spinner 20 or the t20 um system that you were uh putting together so there is there was a lot of things that were on the horizon uh last time we talked so i guess let's just dive into it um tell me what's been going on i guess mark you can start off tell me what's been going on since um since bloodstone yeah i mean uh we uh basically uh the whole idea is to do a collaborative fantasy world that is um beyond what one person can do like i'm in awe of world creators uh really good ones and you know and i would never compare myself to tolkien but in, in modern terms you know i'm not a, you know well i guess i am a, i'm something of a linguist people uh -huh. could say knowing my work i'm pretty good at words but and i and i love linguistics but i'm not a, a trained linguist like tolkien was um but 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 I think there's only so much one person can do in creating a world, right? And so my idea was is that I take all of my talent and 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 creativity and imagination. I do the best I can, and then I gather a team of people together, and then together we take the next big step, and then we get play testers, and they get the next step, and then we build this incredibly beautiful, elaborate complex and detailed world and the goal is to someday have the most detailed world ever created by human beings mm. in terms of a fantasy world and that's that's self-coherent that makes sense that it's realistic it's not just a bunch of random things put together right it's it's mm. it's, 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 it's 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 designed from the beginning to be this bespoke by by beautifully balanced world and i think we're on our way to doing that and so anyway obviously i'm known for vampires so from the very beginning uh van has been part of it and in fact when i first came up with the idea for vampire i kind of thought about should i make it fantasy or should i make it modern world so all those ideas that when i decided to make vampire modern world right yep. then those ideas are now inside of of Fang Night. And, and it's based on my original 12 year old fantasy world that I started designing after my very first game session. Because I remember asking my first dungeon master, well, can I be a dungeon master? He goes, of course. And what do I got to do? He goes, well, you got to invent a setting. And I go, can I do that now? And he goes, well, of course. I go, but I don't have any players. And he goes, well, you have your dad. 
And so I started designing my world. And 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 Lost Lorne is that world. Like mm. I started with a big idea, you know, like a a, a, a giant continent surrounded by a storm mm. that no one can escape as a jail. Your your my fantasy world started as a jail. And it still is. <laughs> oh, hold on, there's a knock. No worries. But I can speak a little bit more about it. I mean, it's it's a it's a fantastically detailed mythology, quite frankly. Like it when he talked all about um, the the level of detail and the collaboration effort that's been going on. It is deep. <laughs> like I, I there there's probably a thousand pages of just mythology gods things that are just going on, the politics, the countries, the people, the creatures. It's just so much information. When I first got onto the team, there was a, a document that people are given when they get on the team, and it's just sort of the mythology, mm -hmm. right? It was, I mean, beyond, beyond the pure joy of reading something like that, it's deep. <laughs> There's just a lot there. It's very, very, very good. And that just comes out of the collaborative process that Mark was talking about, right? Like, like I that... think, I, and Mark, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that most of the mythology is just Mark. It's n that part of the collaborative effort um, is very minimal. Most of the collaboration that we're working on together is um, fleshing out stories and details and things of that nature but i believe mark please please uh correct yeah me i mean uh, the 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 um uh, the core stuff like like for instance this is a world based on reincarnation mm -hmm. and like anyone who's visited india or any country where they believe in reincarnation if, if you once you start digging into the philosophy and the idea of reincarnation you get you get completely obsessed with it like have you have you ever met someone who believes like sincerely believes in the reincarnation it kind of blows your mind in a way that talking to other religions doesn't do like 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 we in america tend to think of muslims as being oh that's the alien religion no <laughs> muslims are a sister religion they're our brothers right <laughs> yeah okay they're, they're they're just like they worship the same god Okay, but in India, it's almost as if the Roman Empire and every city having their own god never died. Mm -hmm. And people were still worshiping the gods they worshiped for 5,000 years. And reincarnation is a completely different idea. Like, like India is one of the strange. So, anyway, uh, the, the idea of the moat, the soul in, in Lost Lord, and being reborn again and again. But all the souls originally coming from Earth, we call Earth, through the Tempest. Or if you want to be more multiverse, you can make it any place. So you can take your characters from any campaign, any any place or time, and have them come to Lost Learn. Mm. You know, that's not our official thing, but of course, it's gaming. That's right. So, right. So the whole idea of gaming is you do whatever you want, right? Like yeah. our world is one certain way for us. Well, for me, really. But for every person who runs it, of course, it's a unique bespoke experience. So I, I think it's going to be, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're only a year or two away from being the most massively complex and self-coherent fantasy world ever created. Amazing. Like we're real close. Yeah. And, and finding that it's going to be a big, welcome mat for people yeah well so so let's 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 sit on that that for a moment so um on your website uh uh there lostlordgames.com there's a spot if you want to like join the collaboration right and you can you can you can't reach out or whatnot what does that look like and what is it like to wrangle on your end to wrangle you know however many creators are or contributors you're looking at i mean uh yeah, I mean, this is the hard part, <laughs> you know, like, 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 uh, I'm not going to say that gamers are cats, but they're worse than but hurting gamers <laughs> yeah. is almost as hard as hurting cats, right? Yeah. 
you know, because gamers have lots of ideas yeah, and they have their own ideas and their own ways of doing things. And, you know, and hey, so organizing large numbers of people is always very hard. But um, for play testing, we're trying to do it in a very organized way. And we'll, our last play test copy, we sent out a hundred and I think 76 pages of bespoke mm. art and uh, writing. And it's, it's almost near publication level, mm. right? So it's not like a, you're not like getting like a rough text, like you're getting a right. finished product looking. Uh, yeah. Laid out by me, by the way, since I couldn't get anyone else to understand <laughs> what I wanted to do. So I was like, <laughs> screw it. I'll do it myself. <laughs> in Google Draw, by the way. Oh, wow. I did all those pages in Google Draw. That's incredible. <laughs> that's, that is is that is a lot of Google Draw. Um, it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It turns out not the best medium to lay your book on it, but, you know. Uh, whatever works, man. Whatever works. It works, I, I was it works. Like, I started out doing, like, five pages, and then it turned into ten. So by the time I was up to 30 pages, it's too late to turn around, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and and at this point, and at this point, it's 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 a second record that you can hold, right? You can be the largest world and also the lo largest document ever put together in Google Draw. So, you know, <laughs> two claims with one product. So, uh, I want to write this and tell them what I've done, but yeah. <laughs> so, so talk talk a little bit. So you have all these creators coming in, and you're you're kind of um, uh, directing, overseeing. You've got a team behind you that's helping with that. Um, but but kind of guiding these creators towards telling, like you said, a cohesive, a cohesive narrative, a cre cohesive world. Um, and you've also not just taught telling a cohesive world, but you also are uh, introducing a uh, your take on a new system, which is the T20. Um, obviously, the T20 has uh, has at its heart a D20 system, but with its own ideas injected in. What do you think? T20 brings to the table for RPGs. What, what, what it is, is that, is that first of all, we're not open game licensed. Mm. Because first of all, I reject the idea that you need to sign up to open game license to do a D20 game. Mm -hmm. I absolutely reject that. <laughs> you cannot copyright fashion. You cannot trademark fashion. You cannot do the same with game rules. Mm -hmm. So we're doing, a, we're doing a D20 game, which is a classic style of, of role and, and in war games going back 200 years, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And, and, and we have absolutely no obligation to to give anyone any credit at all. And, mm -hmm. and for, for Dungeons and Dragons to even still require us to do whatever is bullshit. <laughs> so 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 we're using whatever rules we want, and we're not gonna. Um, and we're of course gonna have our own uh, system. We haven't figured it out yet. But it's not gonna be an open game license. It's gonna be like. We're going to find a way to make our rules clear that we're not going to sue anyone for anyone who uses our rules, mm -hmm. right? And for a trademark, you can do it as long as you live up to a certain – you want to use a T20 system? Just just live up to certain things. And, of course, for that, we got to make sure that, you know, no Nazis or right or, or whatever. But, but beyond that, it's like do what you want, you know? Change it, you know? And, and so um, – but I think generally people should just be able to take – you know, even if they are Nazis, just take rules and write your own game. Like, you know, like that's that's part of the freedom of a democracy is that, you know, even if someone I hate and despise takes my rules, they have the right to do it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, why should I have authority over every single person that tries to use my ideas? Well, we don't in reality, do we? Like a thousand years from now, do any of us have or even a hundred or ten or one? Do you truly have ownership of your ideas? No, of course you don't. Yeah. No, of course you don't. Well, not just and, – and, and for folks listening who haven't checked out T20, I want to kind of communicate, like, that it's not that you're not using the OGL. It's that, like, I feel like you've – you know, sure, it's a D twenty based game, but it, it's doing a lot of unique things or a lot of interesting things within it, right? Um, you've got um, one thing that I really like. Uh, I like how this, the different ways that this has manifested in other RPGs over the years. But I like the drama coins and the danger coins, and I like your iteration on those. Um, it's a really fun. And the way they turn into experience points when you yes. use them and you flip them to see if they're experience point, or they become a danger point. Yeah, the game master to use against you. So it's all to this one flip of the coin, 
and it yeah. can either become an experience point, which using the group goes up a rank, mm -hmm. or it, the game master gets to use it against you. So it, 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 that's actually a very fraught moment in the game. I, I, like I do that. love it. Thank you. Yeah, that that was a really cool. Um, I like like I adore those like team resources, group resources that that spending them comes at a cost, and a lot of times the cost is. Uh, the 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 game master or the tail spinner gets to uh, potentially have an advantage. Like like that's just a really interesting dynamic, and it gives the game master some tools in their pocket. Um, sometimes I think other other systems call it like fate points or force points in Star Wars or things like that. Like what it does at the table though is it it communicates that it's not always going to go the way you want it to go as a group. But that there's a there's a given there's a ebb and flow there's a give and take and it's it's something that you can buy into just as much as your own choices and you can see that your that consequences are have real payouts and you can see when those payouts are triggered and I really like that. Well, stuff. not all stories are about winning. Not all good stories, we'll say. I mean, it I, from from a very real point of view, I want to say that. The tail spinner system is about a collaboration with the people at the table and telling a story. You know, it's it's very interesting. It's a very interesting idea. I, I would call it a wrong idea, but it's a very interesting idea that you know the players always have to win. Yeah. You know, it's not about it's it's about telling a story. You know, Boromir and losing is part of some really great stories, yes, right? Boromir died. Romeo and Juliet, one of the greatest right. stories ever told. It was like, it, does it, anyone win in that story? I would argue uh, exactly. not a single person that story yeah. wins, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's it, it's often it's often the case that um, making the choice to participate in the story in a way that puts yourself at risk and Maybe you die. Maybe your character loses, does something wrong. But the opportunities that that allows for a better story, a better game moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what this system really, really, really does well. Mm. Mm. Well, and, and the whole point of using the D20, by the way, which I forgot to answer your question, is that everyone knows the D20, yeah. right? Yeah. Like like, like with the famous bank robber, I forgot his name right now, uh, they ask him, why do you rob banks? He goes, that's what the money is. <laughs> and, 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 and some people ask me, why do you use a D20? Well, that's what everyone knows. And so I can make a story color system out of anything. And when I was younger, uh, your, your, your connection faded for a second. So yeah. when I was younger, I used to always want to um, have my own bespoke game dice system. Mm -hmm. Right, that's why for Vamp for the Masquerade, I have the D one tens. I love D tens, and they're so beautiful. They look like little diamonds, right? Yeah, I love D tens. I still love D tens. Yeah, um, but but you know, but but realize for this one, I can do storyteller narrativist type game system with any dice. Yeah. So why not use the dice that ninety nine point five percent of every tabletop game in the world has at least a passing familiarity with? Yeah, and, and use rules and concepts that have been practiced. Like, for instance, we have a bane and boon. You roll two dice and pick the highest, or you pick the lowest. Right? These are all concepts. You have a damage roll. You have a you know a, this yeah. is a, something everyone understands. And so you basically get past all the the crap, and and, and you don't have to people who want to learn a whole new system. But they discover a new system within it. Like, for instance, the crux dice, which is talking about ebb and flow of the conflict and ebb and flow of the story. Crux dice, well, your foes have a D6, you have a giant D6, and whoever gets the seven first, you have this huge advantage in that scene. And dividing stuff up by scenes, like all these things build on each other, uh, along with the the you know, the danger, the drama coins and the danger points. So it creates this very unique uh, um, situation, hmm. which, is a, which is basically a storytelling game. Yeah. Well, and I was, I was about to bring up, so it's perfect. You jumped right into it. The crux dice is cool. This idea of, you know, you're, you're, you're ticking up during each scene on a D6 to counting up to 
basically determine which side's gonna take that full advantage and and get some really powerful boons um or technically i guess it's the 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 other side gets a bane but um once that once that threshold is reached like that's that's really interesting it's a way to like move the scenes along in a way and um i think that's cool i also like you have different results for rolling natural things like you have the natural 20 and the natural one but you also have the natural seven and the natural 13 i mean those like <laughs> seem like numbers that should be special yeah. yeah absolutely well and it's cool right like it's definitely different and the everybody gets excited at the table for one reason or another when you roll a one or you roll a 20 right those are big moments and so i love the idea of saying like why does it only have to happen on a one or a 20 aren't there other cool things that we can trigger on other numbers and um i think that's really interesting so you have flukes and you have botches is what it it, it looks yeah, like yeah yeah but they don't happen all the time they only happen when you have crux advantage or the crux disadvantage yeah yeah so if, you, if you're not if you're not having the morale victory right now it it doesn't apply so it's not all people shouldn't think it's all the time but but definitely if you have the advantage or the disadvantage like you know then oops too bad for you yeah so um so I, I love the t20 i think it's doing some really cool things um there's more stuff to than what we just talked about now um but at the heart of this game um is going back to what we talked about before but it is this world that you're building and fang knight is the next step in that world or at least one of the coming steps and what i'm curious about is uh, there's obviously going to be folks who are listening to this who are very familiar with mark mark as a as a designer of vampire but you've already touched on the idea that this is this is a different take. This is vampires in a fantasy setting. What do player characters look like in this setting, and how what might they vary from products that you've put together in the past or things like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Five uh, E actually has some cool things. For instance, you not only have your your uh, I forgot what they're calling it now, but I'll go by the Five E version, the race, and then you have your sub race. You know, yeah. you have your class and you have your subclasses. And I thought, okay, I have no shame. That's that's a great idea. So we're doing the same thing. And and so for vampire, you have your bloodline, mm -hmm. which is your most important thing. And those all have sub uh, lineages. With, so they're and so you know, which each each then of the seven major bloodlines is divided up into sub, several branches, which each have their own fighting and and, and, per, and and of course you know for live action right or of course mm -hmm. i have a whole live action system mm -hmm. which uses uh, tarot cards which i, I think is going to re revolutionize uh lark for sure mm -hmm. uh, but, with this, but what we're working on now is the tabletop to be clear mm -hmm. but then but beyond your blood bloodline you also have your calling which is kind of like your guild or your class which is basically your function within the firehold, and and to explain that, uh, to explain that that vampires can not only live in the city, but they can live above hell holes, mm -hmm. which are basically um, basically tunnels that go into the abysma, connected to the abysma, which is a vast series of dungeons and caverns and everything that eventually ends up into the abysma, the the I mean the inferno which is literally hell. So just as the medieval people used to believe, like they, didn't, they didn't understand the multiverse. That's a modern concept. Mm -hmm. When they thought of heaven and hell, heaven was up and hell was literally down. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're, we're positing a world in which hell is literally, literally underneath you. Right? And so... And it and comes, and it comes complete with an actual hell... You know the devil <laughs> yeah and this whole world by the way the reason it's a prison is that elon the son along with nama the grandmother oak created this world as a prison for scarl the devil hmm. so this entire world was created as a hell and humans kind of just arrived here humanoids or whatever you want to call it that's kind of a, an accident hmm. so they're trapped as well but really other people being trapped here besides the seven vile moons which is the court of scarl and scarl like that's they're the ones meant to be trapped everyone else is just an accident 
I think that is one of the really cool things that that made me, as I was reading through the playtest document, really fall in love with the setting, was that it's not it's not just a fantasy setting. Not that you can't have just a fantasy setting and that can't be cool, but like it's not just fantasy. You got still the the touch points of vampirism and and being a vampire, but then you also have I I, I love the concept of hellhole and fireholds and tying them into uh uh hell down below like that that sort of like vampires always the the idea of vampires has always been rife with like christian ideas or christianity ideas being kind yeah. of jamming in throughout the throughout the decades and so this feels like a natural fit but it also feels like it's it's unique in in its own way uh, and it also, also gives the vampires a place in the world, right? Yes, yes. There is no masquerade in this game. Like mm-hmm. Everyone knows vampires exist, but their job is to guard hell from erupting into Earth. So they have an inside-out castle that has bigger walls on the inside <laughs> to stop the hellhole from exploding out and becoming a problem. And so they're allowed to exist because they've made a deal with the royal families that in exchange for us guarding these portals to hell, you know, but of course, some people question. Wait a minute, are they guarding those portals, or are they betraying us? Mm-hmm. You know, are, are they really guarding it? What's what's going on here? And so there's a whole, of course, you know, any anyone who knows my games knows that um, the co- layers of conspiracy and intrigue and and uh, of of what you know and what's true and what's not. You know that that's that's storytelling, right? Mm-hmm. That's 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 the interest of storytelling that you always want to have these things that a, a good game master can answer those a good tail spinner can answer those but but there's always things out there that players are desperate to know and you don't tell them right away that's amazing i, I yeah um, that's 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 exactly as it should be uh, uh there, there's so much in this document like you said it's like 170 pages so it's a ton and it's for free for anyone who goes to lostlord.com and yes, signs up. up. That's right. Uh, uh, and more the merrier. More the merrier. Um, we need your input. It is. It is a really cool document with a, a mountain of great ideas in it. Cool ideas. Um, Paul, I want to throw it back to you for just a moment. Um, what's something that we haven't talked about yet that you would like to like bring to the forefront of this discussion? I I feel like um, on on the point of the collaborative effort there are so many people that have contributed so much to the project um immediately on looking through the pdf you are going to be uh ingratiated upon by derek stevens artwork derek is just a great guy and he has brought a vision quite frankly to the world itself that is Wow, it's delicious. It's just <laughs> it is just dripping with stuff. It, you, I I hope uh, we can get as many people as we can to um, play test this. It's going to be great for them to experience what we have for them. Mm-hmm. There's you know there's Derek and a lot of other artists that are working on the project. There's a lot of people collaborating with Mark on um, so many different aspects of the world in general uh the collaboration is very real and a lot of people are going to be in or are there's any experts on uh, marketing or kickstarter uh who are free right now (laughs) Hmm. uh that's definitely what we need so uh you know we have a very quick onboarding process and um yeah we're looking for that but uh mainly if if you have i you know play testers are you know, getting people's honest reaction to uh, a game is, is so, you know, what we used to call blind playtesting, but now called masked playtesting. Mm-hmm. It is so very important because you, you, you need to have people who you, you don't, for all my playtesting so far has been me telling the game in, in my, using my personality yeah. to get them to understand it, right? But having people read it and then try to play it on their own is what, there's nothing like it. So uh, you, you just brought it up. So we've talked about this being a play test document um, and, and that kind of being where it is in the works now. Um, and I don't want to pin you down to a or try to pin you down to a timeline or anything like that. But where do you see or what are the next phases for Fang Knight and Lost Lauren in general? What do you, what, what, 
what can we expect in the coming months or year or whatever, however your timeline might look? Uh, we plan on doing a, um, a series of small, like just PDF only Kickstarters. So we can sort of build our audience. And so there'll be like $3 Kickstarters, mm -hmm. you know, just get a basic, very short PDF. Mm -hmm. And that interspersed with them will be books. So first will be like the big um, uh, Fang Night book, which will be all about how to play Fangs, you know, like you get to play the vampire. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to do a Badlander, which is more of a classic, um, you know, Badlanders are like swashbuckling heroes who work for the crown. So that's going to be next. And then after that, we have Wareborn or maybe Bane Knight. I'm not sure which the comp. But anyway, you play werewolves. Shocker. Mark, <laughs> Mark creates a werewolf game. Who, who knew? Uh, and then we're doing a ghost game. Uh, we're doing a, uh, a, a ringing rock sort of mage type game of these. Uh, but they're very rare beings. They're, they're, they've been reincarnated so many times. They finally got reincarnated in ringing rocks, which is a enclave just at the roots of grandmother oak on top of the steps mm -hmm. so it's a very unusual place to get reborn and when you're reborn there you can actually begin your hike up grandmother oak to mm -hmm. eventually become a nova a god so we literally have a god quest in this game where you could become if you play all these games in a row in the final seventh game with your character if you're reincarnated as the ringing rocks you can become you can become a god that's awesome. So, so the whole idea is to let people sort of play a, a master campaign. I would probably, I, I'm, I don't think anyone would do it, but, but, but maybe some would. That'd be so cool. I hope I get to do it, or at least have my players do it. But, yeah. but basically, after like five, six years of gaming every week, you could eventually <laughs> play through all the games and eventually be, have your characters actually become literal gods in this world. That's Someone amazing. out there is accepting your challenge. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so I'm going to drop all the show, all, all the links into the show notes. That'll give people access to go to your uh, uh, web page where they can sign up to get the playtest document. Where if they they feel like they have the 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 gumption, the time, and the chops to to collaborate or to contribute, like there's I, I know there's stuff links there. Um, thank you both of you for for taking time out. Thank of your you so crazy much. Day. Yeah. Thank, and thank you, you Paul, much, for yes. setting us up. Team member Alpha today. <laughs> well, I am I am completely enthused and excited and appreciate you, Paul. Yes, uh, for for making this connection, and let's not make it uh, a one time deal. Let's let's reconnect again uh, down the road and and find absolutely. other ways of hyping hyping Fang Night and Lost Lore. So absolutely, thank you for having us. Thank you guys. All right. Bye.